Questions based on least common multiple or LCM is frequently asked for exams like SSC, Civil Service Aptitude Test, MGNF for CAT and so on. Only that the difficulty slightly varies or the kind of questions or the combination of a theory is changed. Other than that, the questions almost remain the same. Let's look at the next question, question number 13. This is also a question based on LCM. Some of the LCM based questions are uh, bells ringing together, people running around a circular track, cars racing around a circular track are all examples of uh, LCM based questions. There are many other types too, but these will give you a proper base. So let's look at question number 13. ABC go for a run around the IAMB sports complex every evening. They complete their one lap around the stadium in 84 seconds, 84, 56 seconds and 63 seconds. So this is A, this is B, this is C respectively. After how many seconds will they be together at the starting point? So imagine that uh, this is the circular track. They will start from here A, B, C and each take different amount of time to complete the circle. So as we did before, the first step here is to find the LCM. So we did the conventional method in the last question, question number 12. Here we will do a different approach. So let's take the number for B which is 56 seconds. So 56 can be written in terms of prime factors. Uh, 56 is equal to 2 into 2 into 2 into 7. So 8 into 7 is 56. For C it is 63. You write it as uh, 9 into 7 which is 3 into 3 into 7. For A, it is 84, which can be written as 21 into 4, so it becomes 2 into 2 into 3 into 7. So this is how you write the prime factors. So let's find out the LCM of these numbers. At first, let's look at 56. We can see that there is a 2 raised to 3 and 7 raised to 1. Now we look at 63. There is 3 raised to 2 and 7 raised to 1. If we look at the current LCM, we don't have 3 raised to 2. So we multiply it here, 3 raised to 2. Now we look at here, we have a 7 raised to 1. We already have 7 raised to 1 in the LCM, so we don't multiply it there. Then we look at last one, 84. We have 2 raised to 2, which is already covered under 2 raised to 3. We have 3 raised to 1, which is already covered under 3 raised to 2. We have 7 raised to 1, which is already covered under 7 raised to 1. So our final LCM is a this one. So the value is uh, LCM is equal to 8 into 7 into 9. So 79 is 63. 63 into 8 will be 4, 2, 50. Right, so 504 is our LCM. So coming back to the question, suppose that uh, they started together and then they go around the circle again and again. And after 5 not 4 seconds, they will meet again at this same point. So option B is the answer. So I hope questions about LCM is very clear for you. Now let's move on to the next question. Question number 14. 1 by 4th of 2 by 5th of a number is 82. What is the number? You must have seen these kinds of questions already. So let's try to solve it. Let the number be x. 1 by 4 of means into multiplied by. So 1 by 4th of 2 by 5 of a number which is x is 82. So solving this let's solve this and we get x is equal to 82 into 10 is equal to 820. So option b is the answer. This is a very simple question. I hope you understood it. So whenever these kinds of questions come we assume that uh, there is an x and from there you reach the solution. Question number 15 find the number of zeros at the end of the product 25 factorial into 32 factorial into 126 factorial. So what is 25 factorial? 25 factorial means 1 into 2 into 3 into up to 25. 32 factorial means 1 into 2 into 3 up, up to 32. And 126 factorial will also follow the same 126 factorial equal to 1 into 2 into 3 up to 1 to 6. So it is impossible to calculate 25 factor into 32 factor into 126 factor. Then what will we do? To understand how to solve this question, you will have to know how zeros at the end of a number is formed. To form a zero at the end, we need 5 and 2. So if you multiply 5 and 2 together, we will get 10. So any number, suppose it's 32, 32 into 5 into 2, you will get 320. So there is a zero at the end. Suppose it is 5 into 5 into 2 into 2, then it is 100, 
and 32 will become 3 2 0 0 when multiplied by 5 into 5 into 2 into 2. So there are two fives and two twos. So there are two zeros. So it goes on like that. So if you look at this 25 factorial first, you can see that there is two in two. There is a two in four. Four can be written as two raised to two. So there is already two twos. And when you come to eight, uh, there is a two raised to three, three twos and so on. So the number of twos is not a factor. Number of five is the constraining factor. So what are the total number of fives available in 25 factorial? We have one into two into three into four into five. So that is one. Then we have 10, which is made of five into two, second. Then we have 15, which is made of five into three, another one, then 20, we have five into four. And then we come to 25. When we come to 25, 25 is made of five into five. So there is already two twos. So when you add up, you will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there is a total number of 6 fives that is equivalent to 6 zeros that is produced from 25 factorial. Now let's look at 32 factorial. Again, the story goes same up to 25. So we have 6 zeros up to 25. Then we have 30. So we have one more 5. So that becomes 6 plus 1, 7. So there are a total number of 7 fives which is equivalent to seven zeros at the end. Next, we come to 126 factorial and one to 126, it's uh, quite long and there's a good chance that you will miss some of the numbers. So I will give you another method to find the value. So suppose in uh, 25 factorial, instead of doing this method, what you can do is 25 divided by five, which will give you five. Again, you divide by five, which will give you one. So all you have to do is add up these number 5 and 1 you will get 6 now let's try the same method with the 32 factorial 32 divided by 5 will give you 6 point something we are taking only 6 and then again we divide by 5 we will get 1 point something we are taking only 1 so again add up 6 plus 1 will give you 7 now apply the same method for 126 factorial. So 1 to 6 divided by 5 will give you 25 point something. We take only 25. Divided by 5 will give you 5. Again divided by 5 will give you 1 and that's the end. So 25 plus 5 plus 1. So it becomes 30 plus 1. 31. So there are 31 zeros from 126 factorial. So now you club all these three together. There are six zeros from 25 factorial. Then we have seven zeros from 32 factorial and 31 zeros from 126 factorial. So it become 31 plus seven is 38 plus six, 44. So option D is the answer. I hope the mother was very clear for you. You can extend this to even bigger numbers. Question number 16, what is the value of m which satisfies 3m square minus 21m plus 30 less than 0? So the easiest method to solve this question is by going through the options. So let's try from option A. Option A says m less than 2 or m greater than 5. So let's put a value of m is equal to 1 which is less than 2 in our equation. So it becomes 3 into 1 square minus 21 into 1 plus 30 that will be 3 minus 21 plus 30 so it will give 33 minus 21 which is 12 12 which is not less than 0 so the condition does not hold up for m is equal to 1 which means option a is wrong m cannot be less than 2 so with this value of m is equal to 1 can you prove that any other option is false if you look at the option d it says m less than 5. m less than 5 means it can be 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1 or anything. So when we put 1, we are not satisfying the condition. So option D is also wrong. Option A is wrong and option D is also wrong. From the first assumption, m is equal to 1. Now let's look at the other options. m is uh, greater than 2 and less than 5. So m is between 2 and 5 here, between 2 and 5. And here m is greater than 2. So greater than 2 means it can be 6, 7 or 8 or anything like that. So let's put the value of m as uh, 6. m is equal to 6. So 3 into 6 square minus 21 into 6 plus 30 is less than 0. 6 square is 36. 36 into 3 is uh, 108. 108 minus 21 into 6 is 6. 126 plus 30 is less than 0. 
108 plus 30 becomes 138 minus 126 is less than 0. 12 is less than 0. It is uh, not true. Again, the condition is false. So M cannot be greater than 5. So this option B cannot be true. If M is greater than 2, it means it can be 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7 or anything like that, which is not true. So final option is a C, 2 less than M less than 5. If you want to try out option C, you can try one of the value. M is uh, greater than 2 and less than 5, which means you can put M is equal to 3, which means 3 into 3 square minus 21 into 3 plus 30 is less than 0. 3 square is 9, 9 into 3 is 27 minus 63 plus 30 is less than 0. When you add up, you get 57 minus 63 is less than 0. You get minus 6 is less than 0, which is true. So option C is our answer. So when you get these kinds of questions, always try to solve it through the options itself. Otherwise, it will be very long. 